Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Cambridge Union for tonight's comedy debate. It's our fifth debate of term and first one online. Uh, given that tonight is Guy Fawkes night, we'll be debating the motion this house would reenact the gunpowder plot, uh, provided no one is in Parliament at the time, of course. Um, as ever, we have six speakers joining us tonight, three on the proposition and three on the opposition. Um, but before we get started, a few house rules, as always, um, speakers will have up to 10 minutes to make their case. Um, we're working on ways for you to engage in the debate virtually, so hopefully we'll have more for you um, in our next few debates. Um, but for now, we'll just be going back and forth between the speakers. Um, at the end of the debate, you, the audience, will have the chance to vote for which side you think should win. Um, and we'll be posting a form in the YouTube live stream at, and on our Facebook event. Um, but without further ado, let's jump straight in uh, with our first speaker tonight, uh, Joe Venable. Joe is a third year student reading English at St Edmunds College. Joe, the floor is yours. Joe, I think you're muted. Yeah. I'm now unmuted. That's a good... Uh, I think I was muted by someone else, though, so I feel that was... Uh, I've been made more incompetent than I really am. Um, good evening, and what a pleasure it is to be participating in today's virtual debate. Um, for many of us, of course, the answer to this question will be uh, obvious from a brief glance at the government. Uh, we are a country led by Boris de Feffel Johnson, uh, a man so immoral... Rumour has it you can get gonorrhea from his shadow passing over you. Um, a man so immoral, ants try and use their magnifying glasses to burn him. A man so immoral, he once intervened to stop a mass child sacrifice because he felt there weren't enough children. Boris Johnson is also a divorcee. Uh, he's the first divorcee in Downing Street in centuries. And we've also got, of course, a divorcee as heir to the throne, a divorcee as president of the United States at the time this debate began. Uh, it's a great time to be a divorcee. It's a fantastic. And Boris is, is spearheading that. And you do hear, don't you? You hear scare stories of kids getting divorced just because it's cool. Um, just because they want to be like Boris. You've heard about this, haven't you? Kids as young as 12, um, just up and leaving their wives. Uh, often on WTO terms. Uh, so with such a Fostelarian tergiversating mug one put the helm, it's hard not to feel that the gunpowder plot would be a good thing. Um, but some people would ask, look, can violence ever be the answer? Um, and I'd like to tell the people a story. Um, when I was eight, while my brother was sleeping, I snuck into his bedroom and coloured his face in green with a permanent marker. Um, this was one of the funniest things I've ever done, and uh, in my view, one of the funniest things to have ever happened on Earth. Um, and the permanent marker wouldn't come off. Uh, so we had to go to school like that. And I spent a brilliant week um, calling in Shrek, uh, Kermit, and Caroline Lucas, leader of the Green Party. Um, I know, uh, age eight, very politically engaged. Um, anyway, a few days later, the ink was starting to wear off his face, um, but I was planning to uh, sneak into his bedroom again and colour his face in blue. Um, had some very niche material planned about uh, Lofty the Crane from Bob the Builder. Um, but instead, what happened was um, my brother Zach that day uh, got a big wet fish and smacked me about the head with it for 20 minutes. Um, which he did to the tune of Stuck in the Middle with You by Steeler's Wheel. Um, very big fan of Quentin Tarantino, my brother Zach, um, at age nine. And although it was very painful, I had to admit it was making an unbelievably powerful statement about the commodification of violence. Anyway, the upshot of that was um, I didn't colour his face in blue, uh, thus wasting a lot of material uh, about Smurfs uh, and Iggle Piggle from In the Night Garden. Um, put simply, violence worked. I'll give you another example, because I can see some of you perhaps remain sceptical. Um, a few years ago, uh, I was dating a nice girl. Um, and one year I bought her a weight loss video as a Christmas present. Um, wasn't my fault. I, uh, I thought it was a rom-com. Um, it was called uh, 27 Pounds in 27 Days which I thought was a sequel to 27 Dresses. 
um, very easy mistake to make. Um, anyway, that night she spent uh, at least 45 minutes um, whacking me around the head with a large wet fish, um, which she poured off my brother, I believe. Uh, very painful. Um, and what do you know, the next day she got a proper Christmas gift, the movie 28 Days Later, uh, which is also, in fact, not a sequel to 27 Dresses. Um, but the point being, she did get a gift. Um, and once again, violence was incredibly effective. So violence is the answer, despite what the pathetic, snivelling pacifists may want us to believe. Uh, frankly, if you don't believe in violence... Uh, Oh, sorry. I was going to say at this point, um, if you don't believe in violence, the Quaker meeting house is just up the road. Um, but obviously now it's virtual. We're, uh, we're all on different roads, aren't we? So joke probably doesn't, um, doesn't work. Arguably, I should have deleted that before the debate um, started. Would have been really, I think it would have been a really good joke, though, wouldn't it? Um, and in fact, if it hadn't been for Boris's lockdown, I would have been able to make that joke. Does Boris deserve to be punished by being blown up? Far be it from me to put any ideas in your heads. But I think there's a clear case for violence. Um, but I know what you're thinking, though. You're thinking, Joe, violence only works on humans. We're talking about conservative politicians. So would violence work on conservative politicians? Um, well, my parents are actually both conservative voters, so I, I know a lot about this business. Um, it's actually caused a lot of problems. One day, I remember, um, I came home late one time, um, and my dad was like, where were you? Uh, and I said, well, I, um, I got chatting to a homeless man, and I gave him some money, um, which was actually true. Uh, remarkable. I don't generally do that. I'm a, I'm a horrible person, um, normally. I, uh, I steal shoes from babies. Um, sell them online. Uh, um, incredibly effective, actually, selling baby shoes online. Don't know if you know about this. Uh, you have to pretend they're brand new, but you put them up. You write um, for sale, baby shoes, never worn. People pay so much. I got flowers in the post. What's going on there? Anyway, um, I said to my dad, uh, "Look, I uh, I gave some money to a homeless man. He was furious. He was, you did not. Um, he was furious. Made me wish. Made me wish I'd lied." Just, uh, got held up at the strip club or stopped for a long poo on the cenotaph. They was they were so angry, so angry. Uh, don't you know they spend it all on drugs? Um, which is pretty rich coming from them. They'd always, don't you know spend it all on drugs? Um, rich coming from them because their grandson, my little nephew, who's three, um, whenever he comes around, they always give him two pound pocket money. Um, even though he always, without fail, blows the lot on Haribo Tank Fasti. Um, which is arguably a far more dangerous and corrosive addiction. Um, anyway, these days, uh, I just try and talk to homeless people, um, try and find out what they want. There's this one guy, um, he's always outside the, the Tesco in town, and he always says, any spare change? Um, and I say, yeah, um, sorry, it's not much, but every little helps. <laughs> and he always says, I hope you die painfully. <laughs> um, and then uh, when I go to pret a -Manger, um, if there's someone opposite pret a -Manger, I always ask them if they want anything. Um, although I actually recently found out that pret a uh, gives all its leftover sandwiches at the end of the day to the homeless. Um, so by buying a pret a sandwich for a homeless person, you're actually reducing the number of pret a sandwiches available to homeless people. Um, so if anyone's ever been to pret a um, you're a terrible person. Um, but the good news is, um, I always found when I slapped my parents round the face with the big wet kipper, uh, which I borrowed from my ex-girlfriend, um, they normally stopped abusing homeless people. Um, would it work for our government? I don't know, but it has to be worth a try, uh, although with a bomb instead of a big wet kipper. Um, and if you disagree, and I come to closing now, if you think my argument is wrong, uh, if you think my speech was incoherent, if you think that I'm uh, an ugly, large-nosed, disgusting man, um, it's worth remembering uh, that the gunpowder plot actually failed. Um, so by voting in favour of reenacting it, um, you're actually voting in favour of me getting hung, drawn and quartered. 
meaning if you like my speech, you should vote proposition, of course, but if you dislike my speech, you should also vote proposition. Checkmate. Thank you. <laughs>